Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. We're back again in the studio to film another club review, and this time we are reviewing this. It's the Ping G430 Max driver. Now, Ping say that this is the most forgiving driver they've ever made. So let's see what happens when you put it in the hands of a mid-handicap, average swing speed golfer. Let's get stuck in. Okay, before I start hitting shots, I just want to tell you a little bit about the looks and the features of the Ping G430 drivers this year, including the Max version that I'll be hitting today. So the first thing to say in terms of the looks, it has got the turbulators. If you've not been a fan of those on the Ping drivers for the last couple of years, that's going to be bad news for you. But if you're someone like me who's gained a Ping driver or doesn't mind them, they are still there at the top of the drive and it's probably the one thing to call out. For me personally, having gamed a ping driver for a couple of years, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I forget they're there. And it's only when I come to do a review that I have to make sure I address them because they are a little bit of an elephant in the room for people that don't like them on the driver. Otherwise, the top of the driver's got a slightly dotted kind of pattern to it and a couple of markings that try and draw out that the face is kind of pulled back. But it is quite a round profile and I like that. And it also is a matted finish, which I really do prefer in a driver. You've heard me talk about that a lot on the channel. There is a tiny little bit of the new colorway, which is like a silvery white with a little bit of that neon greeny yellow color that's just framing the top and the bottom of the crown and giving it that kind of distinct sort of C shape. And if we turn over the bottom of the driver, we've also got that colorway at the bottom, but otherwise it looks very, very similar at the bottom to the previous models of the Ping driver. In terms of the face, we've got a couple of little bits of white alignment aids on it, but nothing on the top other than the use of the turbulators. So if you like a little bit of an alignment aid on the top, unless you can use the turbulators, there might be some other drivers on the market, such as the Cobra drivers or the Callaway drivers that have that kind of little bit on the top that might appeal to you. But the face has got this nice kind of, I guess, silvery finish to it. The little bit of a, a kind of white feel on the paint to show you where the center of the face is. But otherwise, at a dress, you can sort of see the benefit of that. And that is something that appeals to me. Those little bits of white line do look like there's a lot of loft there when it's down at a dress. And that does really appeal to me in a driver. In terms of what Ping have improved this year versus the previous models, there's two things that they call out. They've added the spin consistency face that we've seen in some of the irons and the wedges over the last couple of years. That's been added to the driver face. The way that they claim they do, they've done that is by adding what they're calling variable roll to the, the driver face. I think I'm reading between the lines and could be wrong here, but I think that's just a little bit more of a way of playing with the roll and bulge effects of the driver to try and make sure you get a bit of additional spin and a little bit of a less reduction in distance and ball speeds when you're hitting those off center hits. The other thing that they've changed, and this might appeal to lots of you watching down the lens, is they claim to have improved the acoustics of this driver. That's something that's always been a little bit about Marmite with these ping drivers, is the sound of them. Some of you love it, some of you hate it. Again, I'm personally not offended by it, especially when you're out on the golf course. I don't think you notice it too much, but they claim to have improved the acoustics this year. So if you're someone that's not gained a ping driver purely because of the acoustics in previous years, hopefully this new model will sound a little bit better to the ear as well. And maybe we'll see if that comes out when we're hitting it in the bay in a second. Final thing to call out is there's three models to this driver this year, as well as a high launch option. We've got the Max version that I'm hitting today, which is supposed to be the most forgiving driver in the range in terms of appealing to the most golfers. That comes with a weight port on the back, which has got a 25 gram weight that you can put in a fade bias, a draw bias, or a neutral setting. I've just got it set up in the neutral for today. You then have the SFT, which stands for straight flight technology, and that's your draw bias uh, slice correction driver, like a lot of the manufacturers are making at the moment. And that comes with a weight port that can be adjusted into a draw or a draw plus setting. In the draw plus setting, Ping claim to give you 20 yards of slice correction. So if you're someone out there who's got a slice and wants a bit of help with your driver, potentially you should be putting that one to the test out of all of the ones in this range. And the final one is the LST model, the low spin technology model, probably appealing more to elite amateurs and pro golfers that are looking to knock down the spin on that driver and deliver a more penetrating ball flight because they've got a lot more club head speed. That one also comes in a slightly lower lofted option as well as the 10.5 option as well. The only difference to that model other than the weighting at the back is a offering a slightly reduced weight compared to the max version but offering it in a draw neutral and fade bias is it has a slightly different crown construct at the, the top that's supposed to be a little bit lighter as well but i'm not able to see that driver so i can't tell you if it looks any different final thing to call out is the price point the max and the sft are both at 499.99 and the uh, lst version is 30 pound dearer at 529.99 in the uk so that's all the information you need to know about these ping drivers let's hit some shots 
Now the good news for you guys is my current driver that I'm gaming is a Ping G410, so an older model. So the comparison I'm going to be able to give you today is old model versus new model. So it's a little bit of a ping off here as well to see if there really is any improvement in this new model in my hands. Right, let's see what we get straight out the gate. So a little bit of a pull down the right hand side. I'm sure my club head speed will increase a little bit. I've not hit any shots for the last 20 minutes while I've been filming some stuff to camera, but we've got 88 mile an hour of club head speed, 130 mile an hour ball speed, which actually is fantastic smash factor of 1.48, which is really, really good ball speed for that strike. Carry number 198.7. Total of 216.4, we do care about that total number with the driver. Spinning at 3583 and launching at 12.1. Maybe a little bit low on the face. Club head speed 88.2, ball speed 129.6, carrying at 203.8 yards, total 223.8, spin at 2921. So yeah, really strong numbers actually. My club head speed's a little bit down compared to my own driver at the moment. That might just be me warming myself back up with it. The other thing to call out is this driver is half an inch shorter than my old driver that I'm gaming. That sounded great. Club head speed of 88.9 mile an hour, ball speed exactly 130 mile an hour, smash at 1.46, a really good smash factor. In terms of carry, 201.7, total of 217.7, spinning at 3451. That sounded awesome again, that's gotta be good. Yeah, that's just perfect. 88.2 mile an hour of club head speed. Ball speed of 130 mile an hour, smash factor of 1.47, carrying at 202.9, total distance 222.3, spinning at 3099, launching at 13.6. That sounded good, have I? Yeah, look at that. It's probably one of the best ball flights we've had so far actually. 88.3 with the club speed, 129.6 with the ball speed, again really consistent in that 129, 130 mark. Smash at 1.47, carrying at 201 and total at 215.2. And in terms of spin rate, 3595 launching at 16. That was a really, really good hit. That felt great, that's gotta be good. Yeah, I'm taking that one all day. Interestingly, my club head speed is a little bit down there. That might be a sign that I'm starting to get a little bit tired after pounding a number of drivers at 87.7, but the ball speed because of the strike, 130.3 was one of my highest. And as a result, the smash factors bumped up to 1.49, which is the highest we've got today. Carry at 203.3, total 222.6, spinning at 3124, launch angle at 13.4. Interestingly, I achieved all of that while still hitting down on it. So there's definitely more for me to get out of the driver by hitting up on it. Just hit that low on the face. It'd be interesting to see what it does. Again, super forgiving. 87.6 mile an hour of club head speed. Didn't catch it that great. Low on the face. That spin consistency has hopefully kicked in. Retained the ball speed at 129.1, smash factor of 1.47. The carry numbers just dropped below the 200s at 196.6, still 214.6 yards of total, spinning at 3533, launching at 12.3. Just absolutely launched that one into the air, a little bit of a sky. Felt good actually, but uh, obviously must have been a little bit high on the face. We've hit that one, 88 mile an hour club head speed. 127.8 of ball speed, carrying at 201.5, total 216, spinning at 3256, launch at 18 degrees. That's the same, pulled down the right, it's horrible. Really interesting, not as bad as I thought. <laughs> I felt like that one was horrible, but I've actually delivered one of my fastest club head speeds at 90.6. Ball speed at 130.2, another one over 130. Smash at 1.44, so maybe not the best strike, but it carried 207.4, which I think is the longest carry. Total at 227.8, spinning at 2753, launching at 15 degrees. Right, come on. 
Let's follow that up with one more good one. It sounded good. Is it good? Oh, it's just a draw. Love it. I like that shape. Started a little bit left of target, drawn on it. Going to find the fairway. Probably a really good one to finish on. So club head speed, 88.9. Ball speed, 128.5. Smash at 1.45. Carrying at 200. Total 218. Spinning at 3199. Launch at 15.3. Okay, so done hitting shots with the Ping G430 Max driver. And a couple of things to call out from my impressions in the bay. Definitely can notice some improved acoustics. Whether that's enough to convince those of you that don't like the sound of ping drivers, that will be for you guys to test, but definitely notice an improvement. To me, in the bay, it does pick up quite a lot of the acoustics in the bay. It just sounds like any of the other drivers that I've been testing on the channel over the last couple of years. I think that definitely shows that ping have made some improvements in the acoustics of it. In terms of the forgiveness, definitely felt that there was a couple of shots where I was expecting the drop-off in performance to be a bit worse than it was, and I wasn't hitting it necessarily great tonight, but was getting some really good numbers comparable to when I've hit batches of shots recently in the sim. So definitely feels like this is a forgiving driver. Whether it's the most forgiving on the market, again, without doing some robot testing, that's going to be hard to claim or back up those claims, but I definitely felt like it was a forgiving driver that had some really good retention of ball speeds and smash factors, even when I was hitting it a little bit low on the face, a little bit healy as well. And I was able to kind of find the fairway or the first cut time and time again despite the fact I wasn't hitting it that great. So overall definitely feels like a great sounding and a great forgiving driver. But we need to go home and look at the numbers side by side with a batch of shots I hit shortly before I started filming with my own Ping G410 to see what the data shows us objectively. So let's do that now. So you've seen me hit the shots, now let's take a look at the data. At the top is the batch of shots you've just seen me hit with the Ping G430 Max, and at the bottom, a batch of shots I hit shortly before I started filming with my older Ping G410 Plus. Now, one thing I need to call out before we look at the data is there is a difference in the length of the driver shafts with both of these drivers. The older version at the bottom of this data set is an inch longer than the newer version at the top of the data set. Now, as a general rule, the longer the shaft, the more club head speed you're able to generate, and that's why you can see a discrepancy between the club head speeds of both of these drivers. I might have said in the video it was half an inch, but I've actually measured it, it's an inch difference between the two. So starting with that club head speed, 88.5 with the newer version versus 91.6 with the older version because of that inch longer shaft, so that's 3.1 mile an hour of difference. However, the ball speeds with both of these drivers were identical, 129.3 mile an hour, and as a result, the smash factor was higher with the Ping G430 Max because I was able to get the same ball speed despite putting in less club head speed. The rest of the data is really, really similar between these two drivers, and I think we'd be splitting hairs to say that one's better than the other. If we start with that launch and spin, we're always talking about high launch, low spin with the driver, launching at 14.8 with a new one versus 14.4 with the old one, and the spin rates, there's only 20 revs in it, 3156 versus 3174, so really consistent in terms of their spin rate. In terms of distance, we can see that the newer version is 0.8 yard longer in terms of carry on average. And in terms of total distance, it's 0.1 yard longer. Again, we're absolutely splitting hairs to say that one of these drivers is longer than the other. The only caveat I would give to that, however, is the number of shots I hit to get these two data sets. The data set that I hit to baseline with the older version of the driver, I hit more than two times that number of shots with the newer driver, and I've got some really consistent numbers. Now that to me is testament to the forgiveness and the consistency of the Ping G430 Max that despite hitting a lot more shots and I'm the biggest variable as the mid-handicap golfer, I was able to see performance that matched a much smaller data set with the older version of this driver. If we just move over and show you my dispersion, I think that further backs it up. You can see that my front to back dispersion in terms of carry with this driver was really, really tight. I don't know if that's the benefits of the spin consistency face or just the general forgiveness that you get from a ping driver, but that was really, really impressive because there was a couple of shots you saw me hit in the bay where I didn't think they were gonna perform really well, but you can see that in this dispersion circle, it looks really, really tight. Yes, there is a natural tendency for me to pull it down the right hand side, but that's quite typical of my miss. And it's also quite typical of the miss I generate when I'm normally in the simulator as well. And I struggle to line myself up as well as I would out on the golf course. Final thing I just want to show you is the ball flight data here. You can see there was one that went particularly low, but if you look at the carry number, it's not that far behind the carry number of the better flight shots. Again, that consistency of that spin keeping the ball in the air as much as it possibly could on that miss hit. And there's a couple that have gone a little bit higher, but again, I think we can see that again, with me as the biggest variable, some really consistent ball flights out of this driver. So what that leads me on to is the question of, would I game the Ping G430 Max driver? Let me tell you my answer. 
So that's the big question, isn't it? Would I game the Ping G430 Max driver? And the answer is an overwhelming yes. I absolutely love this driver. I think it might be the most forgiving driver I've ever hit. And I just love the consistency of it. So much so that I've got a confession to make to you all. The driver that you've seen me use in this video is actually my brand new Ping G430 Max driver that I was custom fit for a few weeks ago. Now there's gonna be a few of you guys watching the video saying, Luke, why would you spend your money on a brand new driver when you've just shown us the data side by side with your old driver and it's virtually identical? And that's a really fair, valid question. And I've got two reasons to answer that back with. The first reason is the one thing that doesn't come across in the data sets is how confident I was with my old driver. Now this isn't to say that the Ping G410 is, an, is a bad driver. I've just always had this concern that the standard length of that driver is a little bit too long for me. And my consistency of using driver out on the golf course was really erratic. Some rounds I could hit it really well, some rounds really, really badly. And I've noticed that my ability to get off the tee and get my ball in play is the biggest determiner to my golf scores. And as someone trying to lower their handicap at the moment, I need to have something that I was confident I could find fairway with, or at least keep it in play with time after time. So moving to a shorter driver shaft, and as I've been able to show you in this video, keeping the same ball speed and the same carry distance has just made my confidence go through the roof and my left to right dispersion has become really, really tight over the last couple of weeks. I'm hitting more fairways, I'm having more approach shots where I can reach the green, and as a result, I'm able to generate some really good scores at the moment, and I'm therefore confident that I've made the right decision. The second reason is now that I'm filming these YouTube videos, I think it's really important that I've got some of the newest tech in my hands so that when I'm filming a comparison side by side, you guys can have the confidence that I'm using current technology against current technology. And therefore I think it's really important that I've got a driver that's new or fairly new. At least that's one of the reasons I gave my wife as an excuse for why I had to spend the money on a new driver. Please don't tell her that, hopefully she doesn't see this video. Now, all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching my video. If you like the content, then please do smash that thumbs up button. It really helps other like-minded golfers to find my content. And if you're not yet following Weekend Tour Pros, then please do hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll get notified of all my videos as they land on the channel over the coming weeks. There's plenty of your requests in terms of the reviews that you've asked for landing soon on the channel. And you guys have asked me to get out on the golf course and film a bit more on-course content. So I'll make sure I do that over the next couple of weeks as well. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.